station of Fox Sports. We are Black Hawk. We are Florida. Marlins Park has got a lid. Roof is on. Windows shut. AC going. As the Marlins and the Royals play game two last night, deliciously intense. Eric Hosmer, Marcelo Zuna, hugging it out. There's your wild card look. The Marlins a game and a half out of that second spot in St. Louis, and of course the Royals are the hottest team going. They have won nine in a row. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Jeff Conine. It was fun last night. Intense. It had the feel of a game that meant an awful lot, and it did. Well, this is playoff baseball. You got the Marlins have been scoreboard watching now for quite some time, but the Royals, with their nine in a row, are now back in it, and they've got something to play for. Jeff, Jose Fernandez obviously is not pitched in the postseason, but the Marlins need him to pitch well to get there, and tonight has that feel of a postseason game. Marlins trying to snap a win streak by the Royals, get themselves a win, and if Jose is the ace, Now's the time to pitch like it. Well, they're going to they're gonna absolutely go to Jose Fernandez, their ace down the stretch. They need him badly, like you said. Has not pitched real well here in the month of August, 0 and 3. And uh, you see his last start here, the Reds, four innings pitch, gave up that big home run. Did make some adjustments later in this game, and I think it's all been about location with him. He's been a little too fresh for me. It's all about location, not only on the plate with the breaking ball and the fastball, but where he pitches. Why is he so good at home? Look at his career at Marlins Park. Yeah, career is unbelievable. Obviously, we've talked about the records he set here at Marlins Park. I think he just loves, absolutely loves pitching in Miami, loves these fans here, loves this ballpark, and this is where he gets fired up. The defending world champs go with G. Not big G, but Dylan G, former Met, so the Marlins know this guy. They know him well, and he has pitched well uh, against the Marlins. He's got a sub-3 RA, 3 ERA, career against the fish so hopefully we can uh, change that tide tonight the Marlins and get a win it's uh, critical that the Marlins turn that around this losing streak yeah the uh, Royals a one nothing win last night fish going after game two tonight Jose Fernandez trying to get off to a good start tonight how does he do it well with his mates the starting rotation
Showdown, presented by La Lechonera. How about that? Royals and Marlins ready to go in Miami. Let's go out to center field. Craig Minervini joined by Carl Pavano. Thank you, Rich. You should read that one. I am supposed to because no one reads that La Lechonera better hey, than Mr. Walsh. Hey, he didn't sound Mr. like Walsh. he had a problem with it at all. He's, He's very good at it. He's like sweating over that right there. That's uh, a little tricky. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the pitching. That has been tricky for the other teams to figure out of late. The starting pitching has been outstanding. The Marlins started that road off against Pittsburgh. Three straight wins led by their starters. And another good performance last night from Kashner. Kohler starting that off. And Kohler has stepped up. And you, you like to see that when Fernandez and, you know, the other guy stepping up. And this guy stepping in for the job he did in the bullpen. That was a huge pick-me-up for the team. I mean, what a professional. And, uh, on his way to having some really great starts on the stretch. He had a good start as well. Here's a guy still learning on the job right here. One or two, one inning here, one inning there, he could take it away, and he's been really solid. And uh, Kastner last night, so to how solid he could be, maybe he's dealing with that little bit of a blister, but went against a really tough team. And uh, you see these guys are averaging six innings to start, you know, giving up less hits than, than innings. And uh, winning ball games. Well, total runs there of the last four starts. She only given up five runs, covering 24 innings. Good to see for the starters. Now Jose Fernandez will try to follow up on that. Coming off a regular rest, that should help him. Yes, no doubt about it. And a little motivation because his last start didn't go like he wanted to. He's at home against the former World Series champs. All right, Carl. We'll look for you on the post game show, everybody. Enjoy the ball game, Jose Fernandez and the former Met Dylan G. For the Kansas City Royals, Jose is trying to tie up this series at a game apiece. Ball game is coming up with Rich and Jeff next on Fox Sports Florida. and Royals. Game two, Jose on the mound. Here come the Royals, brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. Winners of nine in a row. We got Paul Orlando, Christian Colon, Lorenzo Cain in the top three, Hosmer Perez and Gordon in the middle, Escobar, Mondesi, and Dylan G batting ninth. Nine in a row for the Royals. Orlando takes a fastball from Jose for a strike. And the season numbers for Fernandez, 12 and seven, a 3.05 ERA. As we documented a rough time his last time out in Cincinnati. And the Marlins are winless in his last four starts. Oh. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Orlando, Christian Colon, Lorenzo Kane. The Royals last night scored a grand total of one run on six hits. The problem for the fish, they did not score a run, seven hits. Very intense ball game last night. 
Fastball foul back. 97 for Fernandez. The two time All Star. Also a rookie of the year. Needs five strikeouts tonight to tie Ryan Dempster for the Marlins season record. And there's number one. Real Muto digs it out and throws him out. Yeah, that's something that uh, Jose Fernandez has not lacked in his poor starts here in August. It's been basically location. He's been thrown with great velocity, and you see that uh, devastating curveball here out of the strike zone. He gets a lot of swings and misses out of the strike zone. He's been doing that pretty well, especially with his strikeout total where it is. Here is Cologne now, who's getting the start at second base. And he smacks one into right field. That's going to be a hit. And Ichiro picks it up defensively for Miami tonight. This play by Christian Yelich last night. He's in left. Southwest Airlines has Marcelo Zuna back in center field. Ichiro's in right. Xavier Scruggs, Martin Prado on the corners. Miguel Rojas gets a start at shortstop. D Gordon at second. And JT Real Muto behind the plate. Lorenzo Kane steps in. Riding a nine game hit streak, 18 hits in those nine games. Marcelo Zuna last night left the ball game in the seventh inning for a family emergency. His wife is six months pregnant and she had some issues last night. Happy to report that she's fine. Everything is good. And Marcelo Zuna is back at Marlins Park and back in the lineup. We'll keep our fingers crossed for Marcel and his family. Very much so. I had that situation happen my, myself in Baltimore. I got called off the field because my wife uh, had to go into an emergency surgery, and no one ever wants to hear that about an expecting mother or child. Hopefully everything's okay. Two and one to Kane. Colognes at first. This is a Royals team, as you documented on Marlins Live, that likes to swing early. Very much so. The 28th in Major League Baseball as far as pitches seen. And they, have been by they, have, they have been aggressive so far against uh, Jose Fernandez, who is in the strike zone a lot. His walk total only 42 walks on the season with 142 innings pitch, but that is just right by you. Two balls, two strikes. In the dirt, Real Muto knocks it down, but a good secondary jump by Colon, and he'll get to second on a wild pitch. Well, that's another thing the Royals are excellent at is aggressive base running. They anticipate balls like this better than pretty much any team in the American League. You see the ball well in front of Jeff Mathis. Sorry, JT Riavuto. And take advantage of that taking the extra base. And obviously that's a point of emphasis for the Royals tonight because Jose does bounce balls in the dirt on a breaking ball. And that one misses down low. And so Jose now faced with runners first and second. And now you're getting into Eric Hosmer with Salvador Perez on deck. Yeah, I would bet that the Royals have watched much tape on Jose Fernandez and all the balls he throws in the dirt, especially for strikeouts. And Ned Yost, I'm sure, was telling his team, be aggressive and take advantage of those balls in the dirt. said velocity has not been a problem for Jose Fernandez. He's well rested only 140 innings. You look at his strikeout total 205. Which is just behind Max Scherzer but Scherzer's got 23 more innings pitched than Jose Fernandez. And right now Jose is having trouble finding the strike zone. And a visit from Real Muto. Hosmer of course the homecoming. Last night first time he played here as a major leaguer in South Florida. American Heritage star. First round draft pick in 2008. That's the suite that he purchased for the entire series for all three games. So his family, his friends have a comfortable spot to watch him. Goes after that fastball, pops it to shallow right. Gordon out, Ichiro in, and it's Ichiro who slides and makes the catch. At the same time, avoids Gordon. 
Well, that's about the toughest play you're going to see for an infielder or outfielder coming together. This is when D. Gordon's got his back towards the infield. And Ichiro, I'm sure, called him off right there. So D. Gordon heard him playing plenty of time. And the outfielder's really got to take charge here because uh, we've seen some ugly collisions over the years on balls just like that. The Royals actually were looking at that replay to see if the ball bounced at all or rolled out of his glove. But he held it. And it's a nice out to get for Jose. Here comes Salvador Perez. He swings and misses. This could be a real test for Real Muto, isn't it? Yeah. This is, especially when you've got a breaking ball as sharp as Jose's that uh, is as fast as his. He's throwing 86, 87 miles an hour. Uh, we saw the one that Cologne took second base on was well in front of the plate. Jose just missed. He points outside, and James Hoy, the home plate umpire, said yes, and Hoy stuck the call that was out. Perez bounces it to short. Rojas is there, flip to Gordon, and Fernandez is out of the first. Marlins get their first look at Dylan G, and a scoreless start. And Fish D. Gordon pops out ready to go against Dylan G. And here's the lineup for the Fish brought to you by UHealth Sports Medicine. Just like you said, D. Gordon lead it off. Prado and Yelich, two and three. Ozuna, Rio Muto, Suzuki in the middle of the lineup. Xavier Strux gets a first base start. Miguel Rojas start at shortstop and batting ninth. Jose Fernandez. Marlins have seen Dylan G as a Met, as a Royal, 10 starts. This is the 11th. An ERA of four and a half. Hunt. And then he floats one up to the outside corner at 84 miles an hour and catches a strike. Change up, look out. That one lines into the seats. Counts 0 and 2. Yeah, on the flip side of the radar gun story tonight, you're not going to see Dylan G. Lighting up mid 90s or upper 90s fastball. He's a control pitcher that likes to work with good movement on the outside, inside corners of the plate. Last time he saw the Marlins was April of last year with the Mets. You know, he's made eight starts against Miami and has pitched well, three and one, with an ERA just under three. One, two. And Gordon reaching and strikes out. Yeah, that's just good control with good movement by Dylan G on the outside part of the plate. You see the two seamer, the sideways rotation well off the plate. D. Gordon can't hold that swing and ends up striking out. Last start for G was outstanding. Seven innings, a run. 
seven strikeouts in an 8 1 win against Minnesota. Strike one to Prado. Martin one for three last night, a 320 average. As play opens tonight, that's good enough for fifth in the National League. See the different styles of pitching here between Jose Fernandez and Dylan G. 85, 86 miles an hour on the fastball for Dylan. He's going to try to move it that two seamer. Here's like a cut fastball that doesn't really cut that much up in the strike zone. Only 80 miles an hour, so the Marlins have some adjustment adjusting to do. You see them usually have a better success against the harder throwers. Ooh. Just missed. Wow, that caught the corner. So a break for Prado. The counts one and two. That's out as well. James Hoy behind home plate. That is almost right on top of the other that, <laughs> pitch number three. That one's a, just off the uh, strike zone grid. Prado lifts that one first base side. And a long run, and Kane is there. And he makes the catch. You've got terrific outfielders for this Kansas City Royal team, one of the uh, better defensive teams in the American League, starting with that guy. The, Gold Glover behind home plate. Southwest brings you gold gloves with Alex Gordon. Hollow Orlando can go get him in center. Lorenzo Kane is in right. Cologne gets a start at third. Escobar won his first gold glove last year. Mondesi, the youngster, at second. Hosmer has a handful of gold gloves, and so does Salvador Perez. Two outs. Here's Yelich. Eighty eight. Right down the middle. Yelich, tenth in the National League in hitting. And an 0 for 3 last night. Oh. The news as far as the National League hit charts DJ LeMahieu and Daniel Murphy, 344 each tied for firsts. Of course, yep. Seeger at 324 is third. There's a shocker, huh? Someone from Colorado up in the uh, top of the batting race. Not only that, Nolan Arenado and Chris Bryant are now tied at 33 homers for the top spot. And Arenado has already driven in 107 runs. Wow. Breaking ball, Yelich watches it sail out. And it counts two and two. G a swing guy for the Royals, bullpen and rotation. For a guy like Yelich, this is exactly what it feels like to be a right handed hitter and face a crafty lefty. Last start out, Dylan G had his best start of the season. Minnesota going seven innings, five hits, just one earned run. 89 miles an hour and a fastball and a strikeout, and Dylan G goes one, two, three.
Les presentado en español vía SAP por West Kendall Toyota. Jose Fernandez ready for the top of the second. When he came off the field from the first, he and Juan Nieves going over that first inning. Gave up a single and a walk. Alex Gordon to center. Ozuna in. One pitch, one out, and there's that early ambush of the Royals in action again. Yeah, I would think that that would be a, a good thing for Jose Fernandez tonight. You've got an uh, ultra aggressive team in the Royals to keep his pitch down, count down and to go deep into this game. They're going to be swinging a lot of first pitch fastballs. Escobar takes a fastball that runs away. Alcides Escobar had quite the year last year, won his first gold glove. Obviously, his ball club won a world championship. And he had 22 hits in the postseason. Inside the park, Homer, game one. MVP of the ALCS. Jose Fernandez talking to Juan Nieves in between innings about, I think, keeping the shoulder closed. Looks like he's flying open a little bit. You see, most of his pitchers are getting pulled to the outside part of the plate. Cut. That one, of course, just to get me over strike right down the middle at 96. Pop up in the seats. First three pitches that bad. It was a little jerky at the end, kind of pulling across with that left shoulder. This right here stays in a little bit better, and that's a good delivery. I think people, because Jose has such great stuff, if you define stuff by velocity and the sharp break on his slider, people assume that he could just get up there and do that and throw that. But there's still just as much mechanics going on with Jose as there is for any of the starters. Or any of the relievers for that matter. And if he's out of his mechanics, more often than not, his pitches are out of the zone. That ball into left field. Alcides Escobar with a single. And that brings up Raul Mondesi Jr. Yeah, it might be even more so for Jose Fernandez because of the arm speed he generates to create that kind of velocity. He's got to be. Almost more precise with his release point to get it over the plate than most pitchers. Now, Jose is really hard to steal against. He's quick to the plate, he has a good move, but the Royals will run. You got Mondesi up with the pitcher on deck, and he hits one in the gap. Ozuna's after it, picks it up. Around second is Escobar. He'll get to third, and Mondesi has himself. A one out single and that sets a Dylan G at bat up with Royals at the corners. First pitch swinging. Pretty much right down the middle. See JT Remuto one of that pitch in the outside corner goes down the middle and. Honestly as you said ambushes that first pitch fastball they're going to be aggressive all night long. So what do you do. If you're Juan Nieves and Jose if. The Royals are ambushing first pitch fastballs. Do you deviate from that plan? I think it depends on the situation. He's got to establish that fastball first before he can start throwing his off speed uh, stuff. I think his location is just a little bit off right now. Once he gets that dialed in, I think it'll be fine. G. Shorty to bunt. He takes out. Now, this is a tricky. Ah, and the throw from Real Muto got over Jose. And it rolls out to Rojas. Marlon's trying to get organized right now. Boy, I tell you what, if the third base runner over there was paying attention, I think he scores on this play. You see him go back, see his turn his head away, does not see the ball get overthrown, and by the time he realizes that, it's too late. That's why I always, I always taught my son, always watch the throw back to the pitcher just in case something like that happens. Might only happen once in a thousand times, but you might get a run out of it. There was the 1,000th time. Exactly. One and one here. This is tricky, this first and third bunt situation. And you've got speed 
at first and at third. It's Escobar at third. Mondesi can fly at first. Oh. Good pitch from Jose. It's one and two. So right Jose. now, Martin Prado is not charging at third. He's staying even at the bag. Jose being very aggressive. See him charging off the mound as he releases that ball, wants to get possible double play. Having a bunt too hard back to the mound. He's bunting again. Sets it down. Jose's got it. Looks to third. Spins and throws high. And everybody's safe. That is why that play is tricky. There's a lot going on and a lot of moving parts. Yeah, really good bunt by G here. You see Jose check the runner in third, make sure he's not going anywhere, but he flips around the on the inside part, which does not put his body in a very good throwing position. And just uh, airmails it. Thank goodness. D. Gordon has got some ups. He went up pretty, pretty high to get that ball from going into right field. Juan Nieves on his way out to the mound. You're right. Athletic play by Gordon to get it. Now, there's one out. Bags are loaded. You've got Paulo Orlando, the leadoff man. This is where we've seen Jose, and he certainly needs to do it now. Shifts from just get some early outs to I need strikeouts, and I need them fast. Yeah, we've seen him and Kyle Bearclaw at the end of this ball game, or at the end of a lot of ball games, get into trouble but get themselves out of it with that ability to strike batters out. And we've seen Jose dial it up in situations like this and get those big strikeouts. Orlando, the Brazilian center fielder, a late bloomer, swings and misses, and it's a hook. It's 0 and 1. It's just a hard pitch to. Really wrap your head around. It's 87 miles an hour. It's almost got a curveball break, but at a speed of a slider. He's 0 and 1. 0 and 2. Like I said, he's just not picking it up. You've got it exiting your hand at that level. You pick it up as a fastball right here as a hitter. Commit your swing, and by the time it's too late, you've committed and swung right through it. 0 oh and 2 with the bags loaded and one out. And Rio Muto out to smother it. Good block by Rio Muto. We've seen great improvement by him as far as his defensive ability to block balls. I think because of his position in high school he's a shortstop when he first signed he tried to pick everything and he's pretty good at it but he's really learned how to block him one two down the left field line foul that one stayed out over the plate and Orlando punished it inside part of the plate there like you said stayed up and did not have that good downward break they got away with a mistake right there. Middle infield back for two corners are even. One and two with one out. Well after batting practice when a lot of guys go in and put their feet up take it easy JT Real Muto was in the cage taking balls from the machine under the tutelage of Brian Schneider. Talk about the improvement that Real Muto has made and Schneider deserves an awful lot of credit for that. Absolutely, both of them. You'll see him in uh, the cage, long hours, perfecting that right there as break as blocking the ball. Got him! Big, big strikeout. Here comes Christian Colon. It's that good one that stays low. See the previous ball that he hammered down left field line stayed up in the zone. This one looks like a fastball coming in. Huge strikeout for Jose. The price of this, a precious commodity, and that is for Jose, pitches. He's at 36 here 
in the second. But if that's the price you got to pay to keep the Royals off the board, you pay it. And that's the price you pay when you strike out a lot of batters is a high pitch count. A one. Foul back. He's going right after Cologne. Obviously been well documented this year with Jose Fernandez coming off Tommy John surgery that there is going to be a definite innings limit and stressful innings limit and pitches. So they've kept him under wraps pretty much. Uh, but he's free and clear from here on out. 0 oh, 2 broken bat roller. Rojas flips in time and Fernandez pitches out of it. Still scoreless. Mama likes it. Kessler is the presenting sponsor of Miami Marlins baseball. And the discussion continues between Juan Nieves and Jose Fernandez. That was a high stress inning. If you're, if you're scoring at home and you're keeping track of that, there was stress in the first. The Royals had runners first and second with uh, one out. Jose pitched out of that. Bags loaded here with one out. And Fernandez, 39 pitches in. Dylan G threw 15. And here is Ozuna. Strike to Marcel with Real Muto and Ichiro right behind. One of those guys that if you sit and wait for the perfect pitch, you may not get it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be waiting all night. Oh, he left one out. He got away with it. Ozuna flips it out into right. Kane is there and makes the catch. Let's scout Dylan G. Brought to you by Auto Nation. 20, uh, 2007 Mark Mets 21st round pick, 21 spots behind Chris Sale. About that. Not overpowering, like I said. Fastball 88 to 92. That's not even going to probably reach 92 tonight. Low 80 slider. Excellent changeup. And he's a new dad. Congratulations. Daughter Charlotte with his wife Carrie Ann was born April 18th of this year. Claiborne, Texas is his home. Here is Real Muto. JT won for four last night. Bouncer to third. Christian Cologne. And there's
there's two outs. Yeah, Claiborne, uh, Texas, by the way, also produced not a wealth of major leaguers, but two brothers from a different era. The Owen brothers, Spike, the shortstop, and Dave, the uh, infielder with the Cubs. I do remember Spike Owen. No offense, Dave, but I don't remember Dave. <laughs> Spike had a much longer career. <laughs> Pitch misses down to Ichiro, who was 0 for 4 last night. Yeah, you look at the last two outs that the Marlins have made. Both Ozuna and Riamuto were mistakes by Dylan G, and those are the kind of mistakes you just can't miss against a guy like this that's pitching very well. Ichiro, two hits shy of Wade Boggs for 27th on the all time list. And it's 1 and 2. He's 12 behind Rafael Palmero. Climbing the ladder, I think. Palmero might be a definite goal this year. 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball, a little tapper to second. Mondesi on to first in time. And Dylan G has sailed through six hitters in a scoreless game. Call him the Royals have left five through two. Jose Fernandez and the Fish and the Royals tonight. Now, tomorrow night, it's Tom Kohler's turn. 7 10 start, and it's seniors 55 and older get in free with the ID on senior free ticket Thursday. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. Hi. It's presented by Wellmax Medical Center. Kohler has been outstanding in the second half. All right, Jeff Conai. This is second time through for the Kansas City Royals. Oftentimes we talk about what adjustments hitters will make, but it seems a, a better question what adjustment will Jose Fernandez make? Yeah, we've seen Jose Fernandez going to the dugout pretty much in between every inning and talk in depth. With pitching coach Juan Yeves on, I think he's just feeling a little bit out, out of balance. You see him uh, motioning to his shoulders. I think he's flying open a little bit. Juan is trying to pin down those mechanics to where he can get that release point back to find his location, which has been off so far. That's a scary thought when you're standing on deck. You talk about location that's about as well located a fastball as you can
second half. Eric Cosmer, thank goodness, did not uh, see that ricochet. Jose picks up another strikeout. Lorenzo Kane goes down. There's that good slider straight down. We've seen him go to that, especially last inning with the bases loaded. Almost exclusively, that's been his uh, best strikeout pitch this year. Hosmer, a rip at a breaking ball, and it's 0 and 1. Hosmer hit the little pop up that Ichiro made a sliding catch on. Royals have three hits. Liner to left. Yelich eyes it and has it. This inning shaping up to be a lot more economical for Jose. Remember last inning he got Alex Gordon to fly out in the first pitch of the inning. And ended up throwing 30 pitches after that. Osmer goes after a high fastball here. Hits it well, squares it up, jammed just a little bit, but right at Christian Yelich. So two outs. And here's Salvador Perez. Up the middle, Gordon is there, backhands and sets, and Jose goes one, two, three. Much needed, a nine pitch third inning. Scoreless in Miami tonight. Jose Fernandez feeling much better. This is him coming off again. This dialogue with Nieves has been ongoing since uh, Fernandez was warming up for the start tonight. Marlins Live tomorrow is brought to you by South Florida Honda Dealers. Craig Minervini, Carl Pavano, series finale, the world champions. Edinson Volquez against Tom Kohler. Xavier Scruggs. Scruggs takes a fastball up and out. Well, you talk about the Marlins pitching staff and their starting staff. Tom Kohler has been the ace the last two thirds of this season so far. Been throwing the ball extremely well as of late. 1 1. Scruggs a little tapper to third. Cologne bare hands and gets him. Dylan G right now is baffling Miami. He is not hitting the barrel of these bats, and you see another miss hit ball there. Great play. This is a do or die play. If he doesn't get it with his bare hand, it's a base hit. But he easily gets Scruggs to first base. Miguel Rojas now. There's your speed range, 89. That's where he tops out with the fastball. And that's up at 86. But it's location, it's delivery, it's the off speed offerings that make that 
86 87 fast enough to get by you. What? He struck out Yelich on a fastball. Struck out Gordon on a fastball. Change up at 47 percent. And as a hitter when you start seeing that change up a lot some guys get baited in almost to looking for that change up. And then that 86 goes right by him. Funny spin that. Took Hosmer towards the line and then back off of it. G gets there. There's two outs. This is the legal portion of our game. It's copyright telecast presented by the authority. The Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted. And form accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. There was a time long ago on Marlins television where we had an actual lawyer reading the disclaimer. Is that right? Yes. I thought that was, not, that I was thought you were a lawyer. You're not a lawyer? I was pre law. Oh, pre law. A long time. <laughs> For like about a week. <laughs> Here's Jose now. And I thought of that because last night one of the emails and tweets we didn't read was from a fan who said that they missed the Marooney song. Maro for the Maro pitching change. Right, yes. It was uh, off the Ghostbusters theme, correct? Yep. That's a fair ball. Cologne, a leaping throw. You got a gold glover at Hosmer, and he's set. Jose beats it. The two All Stars meet at first base. Yeah, Cologne has much more time here than needed to make a play on this. He leaps like it's uh, D. Gordon running to first base. Yeah, I think he could have set his feet and uh, done a much better job of getting a stronger throw over there. So Jose is aboard. Gordon struck out in the first. He takes in. So second time through for Miami's lineup. What adjustments do they make? When they get that mistake, they can't miss it. We've seen Dylan G make some mistakes to Ozuna, uh, to Riamuto, and they miss those mistakes, but. You go through, there's another mistake right down the middle to D. Gordon. I think they got to set their sights in the middle of that plate and try to take the ones on the outside part. You see him uh, setting down low and off the plate almost is Perez, and that's about as center cut as you can get. First time, second time, third time. One and two. Of course, Kansas City's won nine straight and 14 of 16. Well, you see T. Gordon offering almost at that pitch outside the first at bat that he had this game. He chased a fastball well off the plate. And he went back out there. You see, up oh, he wanted to, but just holds his swing. D is, I mean, he is letting the ball travel because everything that he's hit has been down the third base line. Yeah. Four and five. Five was about where the first at bat where he struck out that when he got made contact with put it in play pitch foul there this nine game win streak a win over the Marlins last night a four game sweep at home against Minnesota and impressively a three game road sweep in Detroit and the streak actually started with winning the last game of the series against the twins roller to first Hosmer to the bag Dylan G continues his mastery of the fish
we go to the top of the fourth inning and I'm with Scott Draper the president of the Miami Beach Bowl the annual bowl college game now in its third year here a big announcement today as well with the tickets going on sale Scott the tickets for the 2016 Miami Beach Bowl are on sale today you can go to MiamiBeachBowl.com and buy your tickets for the game December 19th 2 30 here in Marlins Park yeah and fans that are here can get half price tickets you've had a couple of exciting games last year they had 80 points scored that BYU wild game against Memphis two years ago started it all off. Well certainly the, the teams that are going to be playing the game this year the American Athletic Conference and the Mid-American Conference uh, are going to uh, provide great uh, exciting football. Both both uh, programs are uh, in schools and, and conferences uh, provide uh, a great game for us. No question about it. They come here at Marlins Park a world class facility with the weather taken out of the picture with the, the roof obviously it must be exciting for everybody to come to Miami. Well. You know that time of the year the, in uh, in the Midwest and, and the, where the, our schools are uh, they want to get out of the snow and come down here and enjoy the beach and they do and the kids have a great time the players have a great time and so we're excited to be here and excited to, to kick off the, the, our season. Thank you Scott. Good Thank talking. You. Good to see you. Uh, that's Scott Draper president Miami Beach Bowl the game will be December the 19th 2 30 will be nationally televised guys. All right Craig. We'll put it in our tablets phones and devices with a little alert like two days before. Yes. Jose Fernandez has uh, smoothed things out after a laborious first and second. Which he threw 39 pitches, a nine pitch third inning. He gets Alex Gordon to bounce out. Here is Alcides Escobar. Swing and a miss. I've seen that uh, slider curveball kind of get hit hard on the inside part of that plate, but when it's on the outside, it misses the end of the barrel of that bat. Right there, pitch number three. You're not going to hit that very often. About 80, or uh, sorry, 97, right on the black. Mets fans remember Escobar inside the park homer. Started out game one and he ended up winning the uh, or scoring the winning run. On Eric Hosmer's sacrifice fly. Of course the Royals would race to a title last year. That's a bouncer and it's fair. Down the line it goes. Yelich to grab it. Prado was playing off the line and never really had a shot. That's a double. Two for two is Escobar. That's that curveball I was talking about the inside part of the plate. He was able to get the barrel out and around it. And like you said, Rich, Prado playing a little bit more toward the middle of the field he has no chance at it. You don't expect right handed bats to pull. Jose, unless he hangs one, and he hung that one. Yeah, he saw Riemuto sitting up the outside corner, and it drifted in. Hey! That comes in for a strike. It's 0-1. Hey! Looked at Kansas City during the pregame show about their aggressiveness in the strike zone and how often they swing at the first pitch, seeing. Almost dead last in the major leagues as far as pitches per at bat. And that translates into not very many walks. They are dead last in the American League as far as walks are concerned. They're still in the 200s, 285, 289 walks on the season. Dale Swain, their hitting coach, former major league manager. I got it! Pop up. <laughs> Did you, Jose called, we need to listen to that again. Jose <laughs> called it. And I think I heard Pro say, no, 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 no. You stay out of this. I got it! No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Jose. But you like the uh, the take charge attitude. The enthusiasm, yes, and the confidence that I will catch a pop fly. Hey! 
You'd rather see that than a, a pitcher shy away from everything. Yes. Now this is Dylan G against Jose. Two outs. And Escobar, the runner at second. Air by Jose allowed G to get to first. That set up the bases loaded one out spot. And Jose pitched out of that in the second. He struck out Orlando and got Cologne to bounce out. Those first two innings cost him 39 pitches. Pop up, and that's out of play. On three and two with G. He's trying to get the strikeout of Dylan G here and is just worried about an out and he's gone to a full count. Right center, Ozuna and Ichiro, and it's Ichiro who makes the catch and Jose gets to the fourth. Still scoreless. Baseball in Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. By Southwest Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by your local Toyota dealers, let's go places. Downtown Miami, where the Kansas City Royals, the world champs are in town. With apologies to the, the fan over the pond who Pointed out, and probably rightfully so, they're not world champs. They're World Series champs. But hey, if they want to call themselves world champs, I'm not going to stop them. Nor am I. In fact, the Marlins have won two world championships, right? Yes, they have. <laughs> Our team product, Christian Yelich, Marcel Ozuna. Prado applied to right. Dylan G has absolutely baffled the Marlins. The only hit was Jose Fernandez infield hit last inning. Hey. And I think if Cologne takes a little bit more time on that it might not have been a hit. He just tried to rush his throw and ended up pulling Eric Hosmer off the back. I don't think he's broken 90 yet. And one to Prado. Going to adjust the armor a bit. 
it seems like he's doing just a steady diet of changing speeds of his fastball. High we've seen is 89. We've seen some at 85, 86. Tom Glavin was really, really good at doing that. He would top out at 90, 91, but uh, 86, 87, he just gets you frustrated and make you chase a bad pitch. Two is chopped to third. Cologne picks on the run in time to get Prado. Lots of ground ball outs. Speaking of World Series and World Championships, All Star Saturday is coming up. Padres are here, but more importantly, if you don't got Jack, well, I'll be the first 5,000 and you'll get Jack. A Jack McKeon bobblehead. Look at the cigar in the bobblehead. How about that? Courtesy of Mikasuki Resort and Game. Marlins.com for tickets. It's a nice touch, the cigar. That is a nice touch. Yelich to Turk left, was... but it'll stay in the yard, and Gordon's under it and makes the catch. No more cigars for Jack. Smoking them anyway. He might chew on them. The smoke them anymore. We see him quite a bit around spring training, especially. He's a special assistant to. The owner does a lot of scouting up in North Carolina area. See a lot of him at uh, Greensboro Grasshoppers games. Here now is Ozuna who fly to right. The contrast of these two starters. Ozuna's in the uh, bobblehead museum. The contrast of these two starters. Is pretty stark here. I mean, you've got G, who's at 48 pitches. Jose is about 20 ahead of him. G has been calm. I don't think I've seen him sweat all night, calm and cool and collected. Whereas Jose's been in scramble mode for four innings. Ozuna off the end of the bat and it hangs up for Kane. It's a nine pitch inning for Dylan G. To the fifth. Feels a lot like last night, scoreless. Orleans. It's the fifth in Miami. Geico brings you the state major league history. John Wathan, 32 year old Royal catcher, steals his 31st base to break a modern day record for stolen bases by a catcher. That was my first manager ever in the big leagues. John Wathan for the Kansas City Royals. Oh, really? We had just won the double A championship in Memphis Tennessee and we uh, about four of us got called up from there into the big leagues. And I spent the last three weeks of the season in uh, Kansas City and John Wathen was our manager. Eighty eight. Ninety. Ninety. 
John Walton was manager and Bob Boone was still catching. Did he win? Bob Boone may have won a gold glove that year in Kansas City. Bob Boone was one of those guys that the older he got, the better he got. Yeah. I mean, he had, to, especially with the bat. Yeah, the old school mask with no throat protector or anything. So a 90 was your was that your debut? That was my debut. And a swing and a miss. Orlando goes down. All right, let's go down memory lane. Jeff Conai, a little flashback. There he is, looking good in blue. Wow, look at that youngster. Spring training hat. It's a long time ago. Uh-oh, that looks like a jam shot. Look at the concentration right there. Intense, intense concentration. Hey! Christian Colon up now. He's top of the order against Jose in the fifth. The Royals at that time, and certainly they were in the 70s, and I think it translated into the 80s and early 90s, the, the Royals were all about fundamentals. They were sort of the, oh, I'm trying to think of some of the major league teams that had that reputation. The Dodgers did it one time, the Dodger way. I think the Orioles had that for a while. So I guess a question for you would be, what did starting your career in the big leagues with the Royals teach you? Uh, it taught me how to be a rookie because uh, being on that team, you had Brett Saberhagen, Mark Gubazaw, Storm Davis, who's now a, a coach in the minor league system here with the Marlins. Uh, when I sat on the, on the bench, I had George Brett next to me, Frank White, uh, Bo Jackson, Willie Wilson, Danny Tartable. You know, we're talking about uh, a veteran team that knew how to play the game of baseball. And uh, as a rookie, being there and being able to learn from those guys was one of the highlights of my career. Who did you learn the most from of those guys? Uh, I mean, obviously, you look at George Brett and the way he approached hitting. Uh, I love watching him hit. Uh, Frank White, for me, was uh, maybe one of the most vocal guys with me as far as a, a veteran player teaching the rookie how to play the game. So, uh, you know, I owe a lot to uh, the guys and they, the way they paved the way for me. You see, Jose has tied Ryan Dempster. And you were a Kansas City Royal for two more seasons, 91 92? Uh, I was hurt uh, in 91, got called back up again uh, toward the end of 92, and then came here to the Marlins. 93. The expansion draft at the very end of 92. Surprise you when you were uh, drafted? Um, not really. I had heard reports that uh, I was left off the protected list uh, for the Royals. You could protect 15 players in the first round. And um, honestly, when you grew up in the system, I thought I'd be playing in Kansas City for a while. And uh, when I heard I wasn't protected, I was kind of hoping that I'd be selected somewhere and get an opportunity. Get an opportunity to play. Exactly. Renzo Kane, a 1 1 pitch. And it's out. Right, right on the corner. Jose thought he had it for sure. Gordon gets it. And Jose Fernandez is through the fifth. Kansas City and Miami still scoreless.
Inside Look brought to you by the all-new RAV4. Look at the fresh-faced youngster from Southern California. 58th round draft pick out of UCLA. You walked in your first uh, major league at bat as a pinch hitter. The next day, you singled against who was a pitcher? Uh, lefty Chris. I'll get back to you on that one. All right. Matthewson. Christy Matthewson. Yes. That one. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. It was uh, Steve Carlton. Yeah, that was it. No, that's not true. <laughs> not true at all. And the Marlins, at 22nd pick in the expansion draft. And all you did on opening day was go four for four. It was a good day. I had fun that day. That was. Got a win against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Charlie Huff on the mound for the fish. JT Real Muto, Ichiro, Xavier Scruggs for Miami. Dylan G. A lot of bad contact, pop ups, ground balls. And an infield single is it for the Marlins against G so far. And that, there isn't a guy in the lineup that's looked comfortable against him. That was by pitcher Jose Fernandez that got the single. You're right, Rich. I don't think there's been one squared up hard hit ball yet this game by the Marlins. Does that sign say to 5,000? 5,000. Maybe total. Ah, them all together. That's right. Each row takes out. Bounce to second. And that one is back to G. And then there's another ball that's not squared up. Another ground ball out. Seven ground ball outs from G. Ball right off the end of the bat for Mitchie Rowe. Just has enough movement on all of his pitches tonight to keep it off that good part of the bat. Not seeing the Marlins take good swings. Scruggs now. G's last two starts were both against the Twins. And he's given up some long balls this season. He gave up three in the start in Minnesota. And the one run he gave up was a solo homer his last time out. A Brian Dozier home run. Xavier Scruggs having a fine season down in AAA New Orleans for the Marlins hitting 290 with 21 home runs at the time of his call up. Hoping to plug him over at first base and provides some much needed power that Justin Boer's injury has really ah! hurt created a hole in the this lineup. Fastball up. And it's three and two. Just 59 pitches for G. Fernandez at 79. Struck him out. Scruggs is out. Dylan G it has been brilliant tonight. And that one just off the edge. But when you're hitting your spots, you're getting some calls.
we move along in this ball game to the sixth inning. Eric Hosmer coming up. We're talking with uh, Todd Fitzgerald, who is enjoying himself at the ballpark tonight, because you were Todd, the head coach at uh, American Heritage, when Mr. Hosmer was quite a, a young player for you. Correct. I mean, he he. Uh, it's, it's great to see him out here. I mean, I've had him since he was in the seventh grade. So to see where he's at now, as opposed to when he was a younger kid, it's pretty special. So it's an outstanding time for him, and uh, obviously for us and, and being his high school coach. So couldn't be more proud of him for sure. Did he get a lot of hits just like that, as we just saw? We're gonna look at some pictures of him back in high school. Oh uh, yeah, he did. That, that that right there was nothing compared to what he did in high school. So. Uh, uh, that was good, but uh, you know he's got great power, great power potential. He's done a great job so far, and being an All-Star and MVP, yeah. it's it's a dream come true, and, and it's a coach's dream to coach a guy like that. Man, outstanding character, yes. just an unbelievable kid, great family unit, and uh, just 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 a joy to be around. You coach a lot of great players, and when you do what you do, is is it something you can see? I don't know if you can predict All-Star Gold Glove, but. Do you see the talent that young or, or was there a surprise. Oh yeah I knew he had it. I knew he had it early. They got you know he was very driven uh, had an outstanding work ethic never took a day off on the field always did the right things. Uh, I take no credit for what he did. I mean he's born with that. His dad's done a great job with him. All I did was try and keep his head on the right path and make you know make the right decisions. But from the baseball standpoint he. Uh, you know, he's got it. You know, you know when you have that it factor, that's it. And he had it, and he had it from day one. And just a great team leader and a great person, though. Very, very giving person. Very humble. And those are the guys that make it in this game. Congrats to your Stoneman Douglas team. <laughs> oh, thank you. On a championship. Yeah, we did. Uh, that was very special. Uh, two national championships within an eight-year period, ten miles away from each other at their high school. So we've done some good things there. But again. You know the coach is as good as his players yeah. so the players make the coach it's not the coach to make the players so I've been lucky enough to have some very good players and uh, right. you know it's been special and having Eric man he's my he's one of my favorites of all time. good visiting with you thanks thank a lot you. all right Craig all right, Rich take it away all right thank you Jose Fernandez in a tight spot here Royals have singles from Hosmer look pretty sharp in high school and Salvador Perez. And here is Alex Gordon who's flied out and bounced out. And his bat has come to life over the last week. In Kansas City. Ah! Five homers in his last seven games. Oh and two. Five strikeouts. One walk. And there's number six. And for Jose Fernandez now, he's the all time leader for strikeouts in a season in Marlins history. That is 210. Yeah, it's August 24th, Rich. <laughs> We've got a long ways to go here in this season. Putting up some amazing strikeout numbers, leading all of baseball as far as starters are concerned with strikeouts per nine innings. Up over 13 coming into this game. So Gordon strikes out. Alcides Escobar, who has two hits. That's a swing. That was the home plate umpire who called it. Escobar asking the uh, home plate umpire for a little help there down at first base. Maybe he might have a better look at it than you. We're not getting a better look than this one right here, and uh, looks like he went to me. I'm still, though, an advocate of letting the hitters ask for help. If the catcher can ask for help when it's not called, and then get the benefit of the umpire at first base, why can't a hitter in that spot ask for help from the first base umpire if it's called a strike on swing by the home plate guy? Good bouncer Good to third. Point. Prado out there, out there. Jose, it's a much needed double play. Scruggs. And this ball game is still scoreless.
Wednesday Night Showdown brought to you by La Lechonera. Jose Fernandez, Don Mattingly, no hugs yet. This Nobody might, on deck yet. This might be a wait and see. So if Rojas gets on, we might see Jose Fernandez go up there and try to bunt him over. If he doesn't get on, he might elect to pinch hit for him, even though Jose Fernandez got the only hit of the game. And here he comes on deck. 1 0 to Miguel Rojas, who bounced to first in the third. Hey. Story of the night for the Royals has been Dylan G. He has befuddled and frustrated Miami from the very start. He retired the first eight he faced. Jose Fernandez infield hit is it. All night, that's it for Miami. Escobar in time. And is strapping up the uh, gloves. Looks like he's going to get the at bat. I mean, he does have the only hit. He does have the only hit. Why would you take him out? And I think that ball by Miguel Rojas right there at the shortstop might have been the hardest ball we've seen hit tonight off of Dylan G. Here's the danger for the Marlins right now. Scoreless in a tight game with Kansas City. Kansas City is able to get a run and get the lead. Then all of a sudden that bullpen flies into action. And the Royals bullpen has not given up a run in 32 consecutive innings. Jose center field base hit. How about that? Now that's the hardest ball we've seen hit off Dylan G all night. Sid hits by Jose Fernandez. He's got both the Marlins hits. So Fernandez is two for two. He has the only hits against G all night. It's actually a pretty good swing. It's on the outside corner of the plate. Good fastball. Nice line drive. Third time through now. Top of the order. D. Gordon. Six games, he's hot. Oh, no. Gordon pulled back at the last minute and on a field. Chad Fairchild agrees, although you can hear Salvador Perez behind the plate. In dialogue with James Hoyt. Well, they're just pounding D. Gordon away, away, away. He is not seeing that pitch very well. 2 0, oh, you'd think you'd uh, want to center cut something you could really do some damage with, but he's just really fighting off those outside fastballs. That's a 2 0 -oh pitch that he went after. Pitch number three. Oh! It's a foul ball. And Gordon is fortunate it was foul because Perez pounced on it. He's a big man, Salvador Perez, and he can really play behind the plate. Yes, listed as 6 3, 240. But my goodness, he, like you said, Rich, very agile. And I I would guess that he's probably bigger than that. When you see the other guys stand up next to him at the plate, he's a massive catcher. And as we've talked about defensively, maybe the best in the American League. That pitch way out, and now it's three and two. It's the first 90 mile an hour pitch I think we've seen from Dylan G this evening. As you speak, Royals bullpen's getting hot. Remember, it's Jose running at first. 3 2 coming. Gordon into right field, that's a hit. 
Hernandez will stop at second. Kane up with it. And Miami with back to back hits. Here comes Prado, and the pace in the Royals bullpen quickens. A change up here on the outside part of the plate for a three and two pitch allows D. Gordon to finally pull something with some authority to the right side of the field. They were pounding him away. I don't know why they would go away from that fastball away, but that gave him a chance to speed up the barrel of his bat. And Moylan there in the Royals bullpen, someone that the Marlins have been very familiar with over the years coming over from the Atlanta Braves. Prado has flied to right and bounced to third. Runners in scoring position. Prado quite good. Base hit to the outfield doesn't necessarily score the run. You've got good arms. Kane in right. There's Gordon in left. There's Kane. You got Orlando out in center. And it's Jose who's the lead runner at second. Ah! 88 for a strike. Yeah, I guess you're looking at a base hit that would have to be in the gap or down the line to score Jose Fernandez from second base. And I think Martin Prado wants that pitch back. That's a mistake that Dylan G made right down the middle. Perez gets the glove down. Only 74 pitches for G here at the bottom of the sixth. Into the bat. Jose got a good jump. Up with the ball is Orlando, and the stop sign is up, and that's the reason why. Orlando with a one hop strike to the plate. Bags are loaded. Three consecutive hits. Here comes Yelich. And we'll see if Ned Yost wants to make a change. On another changeup, Dylan G opted to go with the changeup, and they hit it right to the defender. Jose got a good jump, like you said, Rich, but with a one hop line drive to the outfield, he's going to have to be held up right there. Dave Island, pitching coach for the Royals. Ed Yost watches. Yelich fly to left and struck out. One out, bags loaded. Best opportunity for the Marlins here tonight. And remember, they did not score a run last night. Infield back for two. Breaking ball, Yelich down the right field line, and it falls for a hit. Here comes Jose. Here comes Gordon, too. Jose scores, and Gordon scores. Great read by D. Gordon on that ball off the bat of Yelich. And with the positioning of Lorenzo Kane. The way he had to kind of get around this ball and wait for it to bounce to him. He had nothing behind the throw. Lenny Harris did a good job of reading that as well and sending D. Gordon. You see, D. Gordon went back to the bag and still made it home. He thought that Lorenzo Kane might have caught that ball in the air. He goes back, and now, wow, what a change of events. 
Dylan G after dominating is out of the game four consecutive hits two runs still one out a West Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen. Necessarily a, a great jump, but great speed gets Gordon home. Yeah, see this ball lofted in the air. You got one of the best right fielders in the game. He goes back to the bag, but you see the way Lorenzo King had to go back to catch that ball on the bounce. Lenny Harris way down the line, instructing D. Gordon to go for it. Makes it easy. So Dylan G on the bench. Peter Moylan, former Brave. Is in. Moylan, the Australian, who has endured a ton of injuries and surgeries. Perez throws behind. Yelich is back. Osmer ends up on his backside. Prado watches with interest from third. Saw the same type throw last night. Almost got D. Gordon picked off at first base. Gold Glover back there. Best caught stealing percentages in all of baseball. Osuna to left. Prado tagging Gordon. Good arm. And here he comes. The throw home. He Slide Barber 18 Prado the gold Glover Alex Gordon out there almost a perfect throw and look at this wow great slide Perez not quite able to get the tag on wow. very reminiscent of Alex Gonzalez's slide the World Series in 2003. Fantastic. So Ozuna delivers. It's three nothing now, and here's Real Muto. More than gets a strike. That's a critical add-on run that the Marlins have been struggling to get across the plate. Yelich taking second on the play at the plate. Moylan misses out. A couple of major back surgeries early in his career. A torn labrum and rotator cuff back in 2011. Tommy John surgeries as well. Surgeries, plural. It's hard to, I mean, I'm reading the doctor reports here. Moylan is the, the injury section of his profile. 
and there's MRIs and elbow ligament transplant surgeries. I believe he had another one in 14, but it's not on this list. Real Muto, Hopper to third. Cologne across the diamond in time. And the inning is over. But Miami finally on the board with three runs. Board is brought to you by the all new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. By Checkers, fast foodies know the deal. And by Warren Henry, now celebrating our 40th year as Miami's best luxury dealer. D. Gordon came cruising home on the Yelich hit. And the outstanding slide by Martin Prado to get around. Salvi Perez sweet tag. And look who's still in the ball game. Remember what 38 39 pitches first two innings rocket arms brought to you by quick and loans Fernandez seven shy of Scherzer in the top spot. Madison Bumgarner Chris Archer Justin Berlin. Jose misses outside. Boy, the Royals had a couple on with one out in the first. Bags loaded with one on, uh, one out in the second. Jose was hey. able to pitch out of both of those jams. One out double in the fourth. Singles to open up the sixth. And yet the Royals don't have a run. Hey. Take a look at those strikeout leader Scherzer at 210. Sorry, 217. Jose at uh, 210. He's got 27 less innings pitched than Scherzer does on the season. Good sharp breaking ball on a night where Jose Fernandez has become the all time single season strikeout leader in Marlins history. The strikes just keep on coming. A late break on that slider. You see the commitment by the hitter there to go after that because it looks like a fastball coming out of his hand. The late break swings right over it. Pitch Bay brings you Jared Dyson. Hey. Dyson takes the strike. Dyson been in the outfield for the Royals for a while. It's a city's pen. Chin Ming Wong. Loosening for Kansas City. One, two. Dyson now 32. 
Jeff Conine, you were what, 58th round? Dyson was a 50th round pick. Just scrape the top of that zone there. You see that last pitch, number five. And that curveball, Jose Fernandez thought he had it. Much easier on the motion now. You've seen as Jose Fernandez has worked out his mechanical problems of the first couple innings. He saw a shoulder opening up and Really kind of herky jerky with the fastball. Has to backdoor that curveball there. Dyson just gets a piece of it. And he walks. So Fernandez now at 100 pitches. rings in Miami's bullpen. Dyson, the pinch hitter. One out, he's at first. Oh, well, you see him really locating now on the right side of the plate. Back door to left handers, front door to right handers. Perfect pitch, number one there on the inside corner. It's really difficult for a right hand hitter to keep that ball fair, even if you do swing at it. This has been an uncomfortable at bat all night long for Orlando. 0 for 3, 3 strikeouts. 3 of Jose's 7 strikeouts. It's 0 and 2. Perfectly located on the inside with the curveball, perfectly located on the outside with the 95 mile hour fastball. Hunter Cervenka. Slowly starting to loosen up. So I would. Like the pace of his warm up, uh, I think they're going to give Jose a little leeway here in this inning. Yeah, I, I think the, by the pace of his warm up, you look at the lineup and it's probably Hosmer in the four spot. That he's getting ready for. It's played by Frank Medicino. Former Major League second baseman. A little flip turn there. See, he's looking right at me. See? Good way, Frankie. Orlando stays alive. On the 0-2 pitch. Last night Miami shut out 1-0. But of course the Cardinals lost to the uh, Mets. So the Marlins stayed a game and a half out of that second wild card spot. And again, Orlando goes down. That's four strikeouts for the Royal Center fielder. Perfectly located fastball on the outside part of the plate. I don't know, right there on the corner. I don't, if he takes that, I'm sure he calls it a strike. A little sombrero. Hey. Now Christian Colon. Cardinals and Mets are 1-1. One, one. Bottom three in St. Louis. Two down. Jose Fernandez, a hundred and seven pitches. Marlins are 
done skipping Jose Starks. And from this point on, he's on target to finish the regular season in the 180s. So here tonight, a little more rope for Jose. Trying to finish the seventh. And probably no one on the Marlins happier than Don Mattingly, knowing that he doesn't have to skip his ace anymore the rest of this year. And the word that you used is ace. And Jose has pitched like it tonight. Breaking ball. <laughs> wow, how do you take that? Cologne. The body language, you could just see Cologne hoping it, it broke a little further and a little further. And it did. <laughs> he gave a sigh of relief. 3 2. Got him. Same pitch. Now goes Cologne. Jose Fernandez is still out on the mound. And this doesn't look good. Let's hope that it is a cramp. Fernandez is walking slowly off the mound. Watch the pitch, see if you see something. What should it look like? It looks like the right leg, too, which is his back leg. Uh. Three nothing, Miami. Summary brought to you by La Lechonera. Score this ball game until the six. Bags loaded. Christian Yelich. And that would play two. The D. Gordon bringing up the rear. Set up the Ozuna at bat. The Prado at third. That's a gold glover. That's a great left fielder. Maybe the best in baseball. And Martin Prado just gets by Perez with a sweet tag. That's it. Arms were shut out last night. They have three tonight. Chen Ming Wong against Ichiro. Off of Wong. And it rolls the first. Ichiro's got himself a hit. 3,009 for Ichiro. That's in it. A bat from uh, World Baseball Classics of Old. Ichiro wasting no time taking that first pitch off the shin of. Wong. Somebody coming out to check on him. He must be fine. See Wong in Kansas City's bullpen. Xavier Scruggs now with each row at first. A 
AJ Ramos in Miami's pen getting ready for the eighth. One in the air and behind the plate and out of play. Wong is uh, Taiwanese and is 36. Remember, he was originally signed as a Yankee back in 2000. Second in the Cy Young voting in 2006. He won 19 games as a Yankee. Did that as well in 2007. Let go. Let go. Marlon saw Wong in Washington. Ball and a strike. Scruggs in 0 for 2. Viewers at home might be wondering. Marlon scored three runs last inning, but all charge to Dylan G. Still have not given up a run. The Royals bullpen in 32 plus innings. Last 32 plus innings. That's a great sign. Jose Fernandez back on the bench. Scruggs a little pop into shallow right, and it's caught there by Kane. Padres in town Friday night. Can't wait to see Mark Grant and the lads. Fireworks Friday as well. Budweiser burger and beer package for just 25 bucks. And of course, fireworks after the game. Marlins and Padres. So Jose is back. We will have uh, obviously Don Manningly's comments and find out exactly what ailed him after delivering that last pitch. Top of the seventh. Still looked to me, Rich, like he was walking a little gingerly down the dugout there. But Jose is one of the guys, starting pitchers, that always comes back into the dugout and watches the end of a game that he pitches. Rojas takes in. In case you missed it, this was Jose's last pitch. Almost like he's gra grabbing the side of his knee. I, I really can't see anything that, unless it's a cramp, you know, uh, Jose Fernandez, you see him during the course of a game, the sweat will literally be pouring off of his bill of his cap. Just dehydrated, got a cramp. Rojas has worked himself into a 2 0 count here. Nitro has a budged at first. Wong had been out of the major leagues for the last couple of seasons. He's with Toronto in 2013. He's been in the minor leagues in AAA with the Reds, the White Sox, Seattle, and Atlanta. And for three starts in the Atlantic League, which is uh, independent ball. In Southern Maryland. Do you know the mascot for that Southern Maryland team in the Atlantic League? Each row runs on a 2 0 pitch. Are you asking me? I am. Uh, because you were an Oriole, but I don't know that Southern Maryland. Southern Maryland, is that? That's not Fredericksburg, is it? Just called Southern Maryland. Waldorf, Maryland. An elephant. The blue crabs. Oh, that was that's easy. Yeah. I would have given it to you had had you gone crabs. All right. Crustaceans. May I may even gone. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Should have bet me a dollar on that one. You could have got your dollar back from yesterday. That's true. Rojas 
into right field, and that's a hit. Miguel Rojas getting the start for Adani Echeverria, who had a rough night last night. With a one for three night for Rojas. Nice piece of hitting there by Miguel Rojas. Taking it the opposite way. Good time, good opportunity for the Marlins to add on some insurance here in the late innings. Well, it's going to bring up a pinch hitter, Oswaldo Arcia, who joined the team yesterday, claimed off waivers from the Rays. Cold hard facts brought to you by Coors Lights. The last 15 games have been decided by three runs or less. It's a Marlins club record in the second longest streak in the big leagues this year. So they're one shy of the Padres. And here is Arcia. Just for kicks, I pulled up the roster from last year's Blue Crabs of Southern Maryland in the Atlantic, which had Chen Ming Wong for three games. And whose name would pop up but Reggie Abercrombie? Wow, former Marlin. Reggie Abercrombie's name came up in Cincinnati because he hit one of the longest home runs in that ballpark. A time with Miami. Arcia behind in the count, 0 and 2. Well, I'll tell you, in the short time he's been in the big leagues, Arcia has displayed some pretty good power numbers. This year, as you've seen, six home runs in just 150 at bats. 2014 in Minnesota, with just 370 at bats, had 20 home runs. Two is up. Misses away there, and it's three and two. Thus, the importance for the Marlins to get runs before the Royals did, because in the back of the Royals' pen, as the Marlins saw last night, very, very good. And you've got Wong in here, trying to keep that uh, streak going. Scoreless innings by the bullpen. Garcia might want that pitch back. Long 91 mile hour fastball. Didn't look like I could have a whole lot of movement on it. Right down El Centro. Right off the foot of Garcia. Garcia swings and misses. First strikeout for Wong. Almost looked like a slider. Kind of a slip slider, almost change up looking pitch on the way in, but if you look at the rotation and the grip with Wong. Kind of acted like a change up and ends up striking out Garcia. What is a slip slider? Well, it's a slider that doesn't bite like it should. It should most sliders will bite down in an in or down and away from righty. But when it kind of slips out of your hand, you've got the 
they call a cement mixer that's got the rotation of a slider, doesn't have any break. Hey. Strike to Gordon. Two outs, D. Gordon singled in the sixth. Boy, Miami was just flustered and frustrated by Dylan G. Until that sixth inning, G got the first out and then four consecutive hits, followed by Ozuna's sacrifice fly. And that's how Miami has their three runs. D. Gordon, a nice run against Chen Ming Wong. Three for three. Small sample size, but. Enjoy betting a thousand off any pitcher. Nice stop there by Cologne, and he gets the outs. And the Marlins are done in the seventh. AJ Ramos in for the eighth. Now it's the Marlins bullpen who will try to hold the lead. Is the presenting sponsor of Miami Marlins baseball. Royals and Marlins, 3 0 Miami. Padres for a weekend series. Sunday is a fun day. 110 start, Pepsi 4 for 74 package, four tickets, four hot dogs, four Pepsi starting at $74. Kids get a Marlins t shirt courtesy of Del Toro. They buried the lead there. Courtesy of Del Toro Insurance. Miguel Rojas is at first base. Says hi to Rusty Kuntz. Danny Echeverria is now at shortstop. And A.J. Ramos is at first. So it's t shirt day. Everyone likes t shirts, On Rich. Sunday. Everyone's like t shirts. Start out as a kind of a struggle for Jose Fernandez at the beginning of this game ends up going seven innings. Marlins starters just 19 times this year have gone seven plus innings, and Jose Fernandez Fernandez has 10 of those. Little tapper, AJ off the mound, flips to first in time. So the Marlins uh, make their defensive adjustment here in the eighth. Echeverria coming in at short. Hosmer has a hit. It brought a uh, a lot of excitement to the uh, suite with all the Hosmer family and friends, coaches, teammates. Ever since AJ Ramos has come off the DL from that fracture in the middle finger of his right hand, 
I've seen a lot better extension and finishing on the fastball in this. We've seen better velocity as well. Count two and zero. Oh. For now, it's Ramos in the eighth inning. Fernando Rodney in the ninth. Rojas gets to the bag, but having two guys that can close is of great value. Just ask uh, the Kansas City Royals. GMC big matchup. The records identical. Batting average close. Runs are close. Home runs are close. Miami a better on base. A little better ERA. Very, very similar. Ned Yost, Skippers. Salvador Perez. And a strike. Hey. Nine game winning streak by the Kansas City Royals has really put them back in the picture in the American League wildcard race, even though there's quite a few teams ahead of them. Nationally, if you're looking at Mets and Cardinals right now, Cardinals are up two to one at the bottom of the fourth. Cardinals are currently a game and a half ahead of the Marlins in the standings. Ken Rosenthal is reporting. That Jeff Francoeur is headed to the Marlins for international signing dollars to Rangers and a minor league shortstop to the Braves. So a three team trade, Francoeur to the Marlins. We'll have more on that as the night goes on. That is uh, Ken Rosenthal of FoxSports.com. And that's a strikeout, and that's a, a nice eighth inning. Greater coverage of baseball. Shall we? 19th straight for Angel Pagan. But the Giants are having trouble winning ball games. Jake Arietta lost his mojo. Seems to have it back now. Rich Hill, much anticipated. First Dodger start is tonight 
against Johnny Cueto in a National League West showdown. Rich Waltz along with Jeff Conai and Craig Minervini with us tonight. The Marlins have just confirmed that they have acquired Jeff Francoeur in a three way deal with the Atlanta Braves and the Texas Rangers. There'll be more details to come. But it looks like a Ichiro Francoeur platoon in right field. I would say that uh, Francoeur still one of the better power arms you're going to see from the outfield in the major leagues. Ah. We re remember him from Atlanta. They signed him. He's a local guy. They, uh, two big years. 100 plus RBI years with Atlanta kind of fell off the map for a little bit came back with the Royals a few years back with a 20 plus home run season and just a fantastic guy in the clubhouse uh, really good to be around I think a good addition to this team Prado to Escobar Chen Meng Wong has the first out of the eighth inning Alfredo Mesa on the left is of course the uh, executive director of the Marlins Foundation David Sampson Michael Hill. As the Marlins scramble, you know, John Carlos Stanton's rehab has gone, I think, safe to say, better than expected. But you never know that is a serious injury. Justin Bohr's return is still a major question mark. Yelich hey. takes a strike, and it's 0 and 1. On the other side, in terms of starting pitching, Adam Conley hasn't begun to throw yet, but Wei in Chen has. In fact, Chen threw today, and all the reports are that things are progressing well. And I think the best the Marlins can hope for is mid September. I was just saying earlier today if the Marlins can basically stay in this race. It's a good play from here till middle of September. They're going to get some much needed pieces back in the rotation, like you said, with Conley and, and, and Chen. Hopefully, toward the end of the month, Giancarlo Stanton will get back in there, Justin Bohr. And, Rich, it's not about who's the best team going into the postseason, it's who's the hottest team. And I think the Marlins could get hot here at the end. Boy, especially for a group of players that are extremely thirsty for just a taste of a race in late September, let alone the thought of the postseason. Guys like Yelich, Ozuna, Stanton, Jose. Last year was a, a tough year to endure for everybody. Tom Kohler. Tom Kohler. There's a lot of homegrown talent here from the Marlins that have not been involved in a postseason. And of course, if the Marlins do get to the postseason, D. Gordon is unable to participate because of his suspension. Ozuna fouls it off. That's why Mattingly the other day said when someone asked him about Derek Dietrich he said hey we've got to get Dietrich healthy and get him back and get him some games and get his bat back because he's the second baseman if the Marlins get to the postseason and that was always a question mark when D Gordon took over now what's going to happen with Derek Dietrich where is he going to get the at bats needed because that is who they're going to go to to ah. play second base in the postseason and we don't know that right now. Dietrich on the disabled list. Marlins are hopeful that he can come off. He's uh, nine days away from coming back. Ozuna sacrifice fly back in the sixth. Yelich at first with one out. And Ozuna on a late swing. Frustrated by that. Yeah, totally fooled by this uh, slider from Wong right there on the outside corner of the plate. 
see the frustration in Marcelo Zuna. His average is down to 275. Fernando Rodney ready to launch. Real Muto shoots that out to second base. Mondes, he flips. Escobar is there. Cue the closer. Fernando Rodney coming in 3 0 Miami. Sports Florida is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. And by your South Florida Honda dealers. Downtown Miami tonight. Marlins were shut out last night. The Royals are getting shut out tonight. Moments ago, news broke and the Marlins have confirmed that they have acquired Jeff Francoeur veteran outfielder in a three way deal Marlins get Francoeur from Atlanta Braves get a shortstop a minor leaguer from Texas and the Rangers get international signing dollars from both the Braves and the Marlins and you would think Francoeur will be in the right field against left handed starters maybe a few right handed starters as well. And so a decision to make when he arrives. Fernando Rodney getting ready to uh, go after save number 25. Francoeur this year is hitting 273 against lefties. But you never know a veteran like that too on top of what he's doing now dropped in the middle of a pennant race has a tendency to re-energize folks absolutely after what he's been through in Atlanta this year I'm sure not having a whole lot of fun as far as winning baseball games and you have mentioned platooning with Ichiro I think Don Mattingly gives him a, a, a lot better flexibility with using Ichiro as, as a pitch hitter that he did uh, so well first four months of this season. Rodney against Gordon. Oh, smacked up the middle. I don't know if it uh, got a piece of Rodney or not, but I don't know how it could. Wow. Because it, uh, it was headed right at him. That was scary. Getting over fastball. We've seen the Royals go after these all night long. and Couldn't really tell from that angle, but I think Fernando Rodney was expecting impact on that one. Let's check it out here. How did that not hit him? Wow. It went right Whoa. through. Right into the plate. And it's fouled at the plate by Alcides Escobar. So a loud single, to say the least, by Alex Gordon. 
Roddy trying to collect himself. You got Escobar and then Mondesi, the eighth hitter. Oh, and two. Foul ball on the bunt. Pitcher is still in the nine spot for Kansas City. Escobar doing whatever he can to get on base. Try to create something for the Royals here. They drive down a bunt on Fernando Rodney. Royals have been one of the better come from behind teams in the game. The pitch had the plate, had the corner. Replacement there, Rich. Echeverria coming in late in this game. Double switch. Wow. Lays out. Yeah. Danny Echeverria. Terrific play. And a really nice ovation. In fact, with many standing here at Marlins Park. Ball is low. Chesler Cuthbert pinch hitting. Fernando Rodney almost undressed by the Gordon line drive. Has given up two hard hit balls. Gordon's got through somehow in the center. And Escobar's snared by Echevarria. Cuthbert got the start last night, was one for four. That was a nice sight. Seeing Wei Yin Chen and Jose Fernandez there at the top step at the end of the dugout, waiting to hopefully celebrate a Marlins win. We haven't seen that pairing in quite a while. Chen throwing today off the mound. Marlins hopeful for a mid September return. One of the few members of the Marlins that have had experience coming down the stretch in the playoffs, Wei Yin Chen, last couple years in Baltimore, made a resurgence there with the Orioles and uh, been in that playoff race in the American League East. Jose Fernandez was splendid tonight. Seven innings, nine strikeouts, two walks, and six hits. And the Marlins really needed Jose to pitch like the ace that he has been. In his last four starts, Miami 0 and 4, and Jose's ERA at six. But tonight, he throws up a zero in seven innings against the world champs. Which I think we've seen that. The management aspect of his season with the innings limit, every time they've skipped the start, Seen them almost overrested and, and unable to find that good release point in strike zone. Rodney now walks Cuthbert. And Ned Yost is going to go to his bench and he's got some pop. Kendrys Morales. 20 homers, 57 driven in, and he is the tying run at the plate with one out in the ninth. Change up. Rodney, a lot of time in the American League. Morales, the same. Change up dives in the dirt. 
but one for seven with three strikeouts. Orioles trying to come from behind. Man, they did it eight times in the postseason last year. Eight come from behind wins. Nothing but change ups to Morales. And they count now two and one. For whatever reason, Rodney much, much better in the ninth inning than in the eighth. It's three and one. And of course, Ramos has already thrown. He threw a perfect eighth inning. And you can see Tim Wallet, Marlins bench coach, Don Mattingly, Juan Nieves, pitching coach, all with a look of concern with one out in the ninth. Fastball ah! a strike. Count is full. Well, that's a dangerous spot there. It seems uh, left handed hitters really love that down and in fastball. They can golf out of here. Henry's Morales just took it. Sitting on a changeup. Gordon, the runner at second. Chesler Cuthbert at first. Popped him up. Shallow center. Echeverria makes a catch. And so Rodney has the second out. And so while Fernandez waits for win number 13, Rodney needs one more out. And he's got Paulo Orlando, who is just happy that Jose is not out there. Orlando, of Jose's nine strikeouts, Orlando accounted for four of them, all of them swinging. And he struck out in his last appearance last night. Him up at 96. I think that's been the resurgence of Fernando Rodney in this closer role is this reestablishing his fastball. I think he, loved, he fell in love with this changeup, which is a very good changeup. But major league hitters, if you start throwing that pitch or overusing it, they start sitting on it, and it's much easier to hit. Oh, and two. Kansas City has won nine straight in 14 of 16 to get themselves back in the American League wild card chase. The Marlins swept Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh before a 1 0 loss to the Royals last night. Rodney ready. Now he steps off. Not yet. Not yet. Little Tapper, Rodney, bare hands, and holds it. It did not look like he had a good grip, and if that's the case, that's a pretty good decision to not launch that down the first base line. Yeah, very good decision on the part of Fernando Rodney. If he was not comfortable throwing that ball, he happens to overthrow first base. That's probably two runs in. And the Royals are not done yet. Christian Colon is the hitter. Juan Nieves is out. And he and Real Muto and Rodney will talk about Colon. Am 
Miami's bullpen is stirring right now. I don't know that anyone's throwing, but there are a couple guys up and starting to stretch. Christian Cologne. Cologne owns a couple of big hits. In Royals history. As Rodney misses outside. Remember that that great comeback in the wild card game in 2014 against Oakland. He had the hit in the 12th inning to tie the game. Fastball pop foul and out of play. And again in the 12th inning. In game five of the World Series last year, he had another big hit. When you say Christian Cologne around Kansas City, the first thing they think of is 12th inning. In each of the last two years, Real Muto out for a visit. Miami's outfield is deep, especially Yelich and left. The tying runs at first. Said no doubles defensive, do not want to let anything get over their head. Outstanding change up there by Fernando Rodney. It's that really good one that has that helicopter type rotation on it. Dives away at the end. One and two. Gordon, Cuthbert, and Orlando out there. And Cologne hangs in, shoots it into the seats. Wow, nice play there down the line. That's why you bring a glove, Rich. Bring a glove, get some love. <laughs> Another one, two. Bags loaded. Two outs. Rodney steps off the mound. No place to put Cologne. You don't necessarily want to get to Kane and Hosmer. One, two again. to the at bat coming. Two two. Line drive. Ball game. Echeverria has it. Rodney finishes. Though he wobbles in the ninth. Jose Fernandez pitches like an ace and picks up his 13th win. Nine punch outs for Jose. The Marlins Get three runs in the sixth. Christian Yelich, a two run single, the big hit. And Miami evens the score with the world champs. Check 
Lakers and Marlins Live are coming up. Rodney's 25th save is eighth with the Marlins. Two hours and 35 minutes. An important win for the Fish, 66 and 60. And a chance to win the series tomorrow night. And I'm sure for Jose Fernandez, he has to be quite pleased with the results. He had struggled in his last four starts. Marlins were 0 and 4, and his ERA was at six. But tonight, seven scoreless innings. Command was there, control was there. The defector. The defector was at full force tonight. Of course, the nickname for his curveball. And that was there as well. Craig Minervini down below with Jose. Rich, thank you very much as we welcome in Jose Fernandez here. <laughs> He's getting a, little, getting a little skittish there. I know, I know. I, sorry, I worried. Sorry. Let's talk about a few things. You came in here. The Marlins had lost your last four starts. You were on regular rest. How much were you aware of that big start against the defending world champions? You know, you know, every game counts right now. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we're trying, man. We're giving our heart and we get everything that we got. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's nice to come on top and, you know, have some fun in the clubhouse. It's just something that we look forward to. I understand the purpose, but do you feel more comfortable in the normal rest? Did you feel different against Cincinnati than you would today? I mean, I make some adjustments. You know, I, I was doing uh, some things that, you know, they were not, they were, they were not good for a mechanic, and, and now, now making pitches. So, you know, against teams like this, you know, you got to bring your A game, and, and you know, you know, I was trying to make good pitches and get quick outs and get my guys back in the dugout. All right, so let's talk about the play in the second inning, the bunt play. And uh, you were able to obviously re recover after that. But look at the second inning. Uh, you got to have a little jam in the first inning, second inning here. After one out, a couple of heads. You know, uh, I was just trying to get, you know, I told, I told. Lucky. Oh! All right, hold on. We'll let you recover there. You knew it was coming. Let him recover here. It's a shame everybody else gets so much enjoyment out of the one guy who gets the, the shaving cream. Right. I think it's cool. I mean, that's a good thing, I guess. We won, so that's the only happens when we win, so we're good. All right, so back to live action, second inning. you, you got to have a little jam. A couple of guys on. Talk about that inning and, and how big that was for you. you look at it. You know, you know, not only for us, I, you know, I think that, you know, I think it for our team. Uh, I'm trying to put zeros on the board so we can come back out here and hit. Uh, you know, they make some good plays. JT calls some great pitches, blocks some great balls. And, and about you know, this play here? Right here, I, I don't know. I checked the guy, and I'm like, normally that's a throw, but, you know, I got the ball, and I throw a really good cutter that I wish that I have in real life that I don't have. So. <laughs> but here's the, the big thing. You struck out Orlando, and you get the ground ball. So that's, those are those key outs that you get in a ball game that usually when you look back, and say that was the difference of the game sometimes. You know, big, man. You know, huge. Uh, you know, this game for every game for us is so big right now. And, you know, getting out of those innings like that, you know, it gives you a lot of confidence going forward. So that's something that for sure we look up, we look up to and against a really good team. I know you probably don't get caught up in statistics. That's a media thing sometimes, but it is neat to get this number tonight as you pass our pal Ryan Dempster. Did it early. I mean, it's not even September yet. <laughs> that's a pretty neat number for you. 213. That's a Marlin record. 213 strikeouts. You know, man, lucky to be healthy. That's the only thing that I can say. Lucky to be healthy. Lucky to study, you know, this game plan, that game, and, and, and lucky, to, you know, to have a great teammate, and, and great catchers back there, and great coaches, and just, I mean, the whole big thing is being healthy and, you know, give my best to my team. That's those numbers are all good and all beautiful and stuff, but they don't really, they don't really do much. Were you giving any of your teammates any advice on how to hit Dylan G tonight? Huh. I don't know, man. You know, I was, I was honestly trying to make contact and having fun. You know how I am. I like to have fun, and uh, and it's just, you know, there I'm like, Field it. I'm like, don't, man, don't. I'm too fast. <laughs> this was a big hit, though, in the sixth. It was still a 0-0 game at that point, a one-out single, and you wound up uh, having to work your way around the bases and score in that uh, inning. You know, it's all about competing and having fun to me. So I think, you know, 
The guys did a great job, man, and, and you know, we, we're having fun out here. That's all that matters for us. What happened after the seventh? Was it just a cramp for you? I had, a, I had two cramps. I got one of my, the last hitter, I had like, the last five pitches, I was cramping on my leg, and uh, you know, I was trying to make a good pitch, and you know, I got out of the inning, and the, and the, and the cramp stayed there. It didn't go away that time. So I kind of like let it stretch, and then, you know, my, my leg up here cramp a little bit, but ready to go again. Back in the wind calm, that must feel nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time. Yep. All right. Thank you, Jose. All right. Thank you. All right, Jose Fernandez, guys. He goes to 27 and 2 at home now. Big Marlins win back to you. All right. Thank you, Craig. Jose Fernandez and the Fish with a much needed win. As they even the score with the Royals tonight, Jose, seven innings, nine strikeouts, no runs. Good bullpen from A.J. Ramos. Fernando Rodney wobbled, but got it done. Marlins live next.